So the last time we talked about me with the person who's like kind of on the edge and I feel like I have like 10 of these right now. And then it, you all, we, uh, you said, okay, so when would you like to hear back from me? So I'm doing that and it's like, okay, call me back in a week. Call me back in a week. Call me back in a week. How do I like, and I asked, well, what would have to happen in order for you to take that dive? They say the price. And with one in particular, I'm thinking about, I know the price is a little high. I could take the listing, but I don't, I don't want to take something for an ego. You know, I want a paycheck. Yep. Um, a lot of these people really don't have to sell. I mean, you know, they're getting great rental income from it. Most of them don't owe mortgages. Um, how do I say, you know, how do I guide them towards, you know, let's list the property, but not take it at, you know, a, a price that doesn't fit the comps. Yeah. So that's, you just asked a lot of, a lot, a lot of different moving parts to that. I know what you're asking. I mean, really what you're asking is like, how, how do you take, how do you get the prospect over the hump? That's like, you know, just, they're just not there yet. You know, here's what I think you should do is you have to give them permission to tell, you, no, this is a thing that I think you should, you should introduce yourself into your business is I think this is, I struggled with this for a long time. Like I, I remember vividly being kind of where you're at, where you're getting good enough to like generate a lot of opportunity over the telephone, which is a cool skill to that you've acquired now. And now you have like a bunch of people that potentially aren't real leads that, you know, especially in the absentee owner world, a lot of people are open to selling these properties, which is why they're so such a valuable opportunity for us. But potentially, they might not be that motivated, right? And so what we're talking about here is I think you've got to give them the permission to tell you no, right? And so in these conversations with these prospects, I'll call them, not leads, I would say, when I get them on the phone, I would give them an out. I would say, Joel, let me just ask you while I have you now, I know we've had a couple of conversations, how important, use how, how important would you say selling this house is right now? Uh, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's pretty valuable. Um, you know, prices are super up. If my wife was still around it, we would definitely sell it. But now that she's not around anymore. Um, yeah, I'm just, yeah, I'm just not sure. You know, I could rent it out. You know, I was talking to a rental company. They just weren't accepting any clients, you know, a year ago. You know, who knows where they're at now? Now, stop. Here's the pivotal part. Ready? Why don't you just keep it and rent it? Now, don't say anything. When you say this to a prospect, because typically, I don't know what you're saying exactly, but you're trying to lead them to some type of follow-up conversation, probably, correct? Uh, yeah, and I think I've had that conversation. I'm like, well, yeah, why don't you just keep it? I'll even recommend a rental management company for you. Okay, good. That's called going negative. So we want to go negative because we're looking for them to sell their motivation. And if there is none, you don't have a lead. That's how you know. That's how you identify it. So tell them not to do the thing you want them to do and see if they defend it or not. And this is how you uncover. It's like a hidden gem to un uncover motivation. So if they say, yeah, I probably could just keep it, you know, that's, you know, probably end up what I'll do. Well, that, yeah, go ahead. And I get that. They're like, yeah, you know, we, cause I asked that question. They're like, yeah, well, we, I mean, I could just keep it and rent it, you know? Um, but still, I don't know, you know, values are so high. I could make a lot of money off this. Yeah. So let That's me ask you this. Like so watch, so let's have the conversation. So be the real prospects and I'll give you the real conversation. So I would say, Joel, why not just hang on to it as a long-term rental? Well, Brandon, I mean, you know, I could, and that's definitely something I've considered. You know, I used to talk to a rental company and I was going to, but they were just full of clients at that time. I, I don't know where they're at now. I might call them. So, you know, but then again, your values are just so high. I don't come down very often. Right now it's not rented. So I, I'm just not sure. I don't know what I want to do. So let me ask you this. I'm going to help to give you some clarity. There's so many people I'm talking to right now, Joel, that are in the exact same boat you are. Because this property is potentially worth more than it ever has been worth ever, that's what's probably got you a little unclear. Here's the one question you should think about. If you knew right now 
that this house is never going to be worth as much as it is worth now. And that by waiting, you're going to sell it for less. If you knew that right now, would you wait or would you sell it at this moment? I don't know how the prospect would answer. Well, that's the point is like we have to get them to a point of contention. Remember what I said at the beginning of the call? Sales, this is the whole thing. You want the whole sales secret? Is you have to bring the prospect in away from the pain or closer to the pleasure. That is what your job is to do at a call or at a face-to-face -face meeting. So what I'm doing now, when I say bring the prospect to contention, this is the point of contention. I'm seeing which one is more motivating, pleasure or avoiding pain. And I do that by asking you this question that's very difficult to answer. If you knew that by, you know, that, that the house is worth the most that it's ever going to be worth ever right now, and you could sell it and you could walk away and you'd be happy. But if you knew it was going to be worth less later, what would you do? We're trying to get the prospect to a point of like, what is more important? Because whatever they say, then you can get them to take action, right? Because people only take action when they're in a position of, uh, uh, of pain or pleasure. They, that's when they take action. When we leave them in uncertainty, they take no action. And it's like, all right, just call me back. Just call me back. Just call me back. Just call me back. So we have to get the prospect to the point of like a decision. And that's how you do it with an absentee owner for sure. Because the reality is this. Every absentee owner right now, if they don't sell, they're deciding that selling at a lower price in the future is okay. That's all the information we have to go off of, right? If we look at all the data, the data suggests, Joel, this is a little bit of a role play and a little bit of an education. These houses are worth more than they ever have been. So any seller, forget absentee owners, you guys and girls, any seller who's on the fence of waiting, waiting means you're okay selling for less money in the future. Most sellers are not wanting to sell for less money. Can we agree to that? Yeah. So when we bring that to their thoughts, it's like, well, if, yeah, th that brings them to a whole new thought pattern because that's the truth and that's the reality. Yeah. And I think for these people, it's not so much pain, but pleasure, like you said. Yeah. So, you know, that's, that's what I would do because when I'm on these prospecting phone calls, it's like, I don't want to, I don't want to keep going round and round. And it's like, it's okay. Like, tell me no, man. Like, just say no, you know? Yeah. Why not just hang on to this thing? You know, why well, sell it at all? It's freaking great rental. I, tr I get them to sell me on motivation. If there's any motivation there whatsoever, I say, okay, cool. Well, let's have that conversation, right? So let me give you some clarity. And this is where you can come across as a real expert to say, here's one thing I think you, you and I can both agree on. The house right now is worth more than it's ever been worth since you've owned it. Would you agree? They're going to have to say yes, because it is. Yeah. And so the question is, are you planning to hang on to this forever? This is another question. If you don't sell now, the next best thing is hanging on to this house as a landlord for the next 20 years, like a 401k. Is that in your, in your plan? If the answer is, heck no, I do not want to be a landlord long term. My clients are selling now because the market's never been this high. And so that's a question for you. You know, are you planning to hang on to this long term, play the long game? Because that's the only way you're going to make a return on this house. Or are you trying to get the cash out of it? What's more important? Right. You know, and having more strategic conversations, I think, will help, too. OK, yeah, that helps out. Um, one last thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I've had this happen a couple of times. I call them. I say, hey, it's Joel. Realtor, I'm climbing about one, two, three street. They're like, yeah, kind of weary as if they've had a lot of calls. Again, these are absentees. Yep. And I said, well, I mean, would you consider if you get a good offer? And they're like, I don't know yet. Like scared because I'm a salesperson and they've had a lot of calls and then they hang up. Do I yeah. call them back? Do I cold call them later again? I would absolutely text them if they hang up. Okay. So I would say, hey, it's Joel. We just got disconnected. I'm sorry if I, you know, I know I was, I know I was calling you out of the blue, which is weird. You know, I would, and then tell them the situation. There's just a lack of homes for sale in that area with high, high buyer demand. And I'm trying, we're trying to find good homes for all these buyers, which is the truth. 
and see how they respond to that because most of your competitors don't call back. They're too scared anyway. And so when you text them back, they know this is a real professional. Okay. That's what I would do. That makes sense. I got a listing that want that way, an expired listing, you know, that's getting hammered all morning. Just fuck off. Don't call me. And I text them right back with empathy. Like, Hey, it's Brandon. We just got disconnected. I didn't mean to call and offend you. Right. And I just outline kind of the situation, my mindset. And he's like, wow, you're the only real human that like responded that way. And that's how I got the listing. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I feel like, uh, there's a lot of opportunity and I'm trying to step my game up. So yeah, well, it absolutely is getting it. It has been stepped up in my opinion, but yeah, good stuff, man.